So we all know that modular applications in LabVIEW, like ones that use the Active Framework, have these very succinct modular designs, where you have high cohesion and low coupling. The same is true for the user interface. However, because AF works with object-oriented programming, we also have the power of inheritance for all of our actors. So for the user interface, I'm actually going to essentially make a user interface abstraction layer. The same way you might have a hardware abstraction layer to decide between different pieces of hardware, we can have a UI abstraction layer to decide between different user interfaces or to add on new user interfaces as time progresses if you want your UI to have an updated feel. By splitting the user interface and the business logic, it means you can update the user interface without having to recode any functionality. The only methods you would have to recreate are ones which updated front panel controls and indicators. All of the hard work and the business logic can remain the same in a completely different actor. So let's go through how the chat room actually works. We have the server, which is our top level root actor, and that's going to launch as many chat window models as it wants or as the user decides. The chat window model is going to launch exactly one chat room controller. And the chat room controller actor is essentially going to be our user interface abstraction layer, is the abstract class. The concrete implementations of our user interfaces are going to be the child classes or the child actors of the controller. So I've created one called chat window panel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created the chat window panel actor and I'm going to show you how I created it using a brand new toolkit developed by Alan C. Smith and Sam Taggart. So they've developed this awesome scripting tool which takes away a lot of the repetitive tasks that we have to do like creating user events and closing them in pre-launch init and stop call. That's all scripted for us and in this video I'm going to show you how to use it. To get started with this toolkit let's head over to tools and then create actor from template and let's call this actor chat window panel and we can create actor. So let's save this and let's explore what's on the inside. So actor call has already been created for us. So on the block diagram, you will see that we have an event structure already there and all the user events have already been registered and we're unregistering them at the end. And if we have a look at the front panel, notice how we don't have any controls or indicators. Or rather we do, they're just hidden. The other thing to note is that if we go into VI properties, notice how the show front panel when called and close afterwards if originally closed items have been selected for us. Now let's have a look at what they've done in pre-launch init. In pre-launch init, they've created our stop user event. And if you remember from one of my previous videos, if an error occurs, that user event is actually destroyed. If we head over to the stop call, notice how the same is happening here. So all user events are destroyed. However, with the stop user event, we are generating that event first in order to stop the helper loop. Let's head back to the front panel and create a bit of a user interface. Okay, so I've created this user interface and now what I need to do is add user event support for all of the indicators. So to do that, let's right click an indicator like messages here and go down to add event support. So if we click that, now let's head over to the block diagram to see what happened. Notice how a user event called messages has been created and the messages terminal has been wired for us. But more to that, if we have a look in pre-launch in it, a messages user event has been created for us. And if we look in the stop call,
the messages used with them is also being destroyed, which means the only thing that we have to do now is to create a method to generate that user event. So let's save. Now I want user interface panel to override any methods in chat room controller. So to do that, we need to change the inheritance. So I'll right click our class, go to properties, inheritance, change inheritance to chat room controller, inherit from selected and okay. So we'll save that. Now we'll create this VI for override. And if you remember from a few videos ago, I created a dynamic dispatch VI called update message. So we can override update message. And instead of using the parent method, we can use our own. So when that user event was scripted, the user event was also added to the actor private data. So we can simply unbundle the actor till we get to messages. And then we can generate that user event. So this is great, we've created our method now. So let's now try out what we've created. So I will close all of this. And in chat room model where we're launching our user interface actor, let's just change the actor while it's loading. So instead of user interface controller, we'll load chat window panel. So we'll save those. We then go into our launcher and run the VI. Let's launch the chat window to see what happens. So we launch chat window. Well, hey, you can see that our brand new user interface has loaded and we can launch a couple of these. And let's send our new user interface a message. Oh, click the wrong button there. Send global chat. That global chat was sent to all of our new user interfaces, which took all of a couple of minutes to change. That's pretty great. So in this video, we found out how we should structure our user interface actors for optimal code reuse if the UI should change at some point. We also used a brand new tool which really speeds up development time by scripting our user events for indicators for us. I then demonstrated sending a global message from the root actor to all of our user interfaces. However, up until now, we've always been sending messages from a calling actor to a nested actor. In the next video, I'm going to go through abstract messages so we can send messages from a nested actor up to the caller. As always, please like, comment, subscribe and leave your feedback below. I'll leave links in the description for all of the code I've shown you today as well as the VI package for the tool I showed as well. Cheers, see you next time.